Hello and welcome to Non Inkable. Oh my goodness, what a weekend. Uh, so we just got back from the DLC in Fort Worth, Texas this morning. Had like a 6 a.m. flight. It was a crazy weekend. It was super fun, but also super tiring. <laughs> I feel like we got what we wanted to get and I learned a lot. And I think it'll be good prep for Las Vegas, which tickets go on sale today. And unfortunately, I'm going to be at work. So hopefully... I can just be there, logged in, and then get my tickets, and then I really want to go. Okay, so we were able. The main goal was to get this, and we got it. It's so pretty. Cinderella. So we got the Cinderella mat, which is mainly our goal, and the frame is coming today because there's uh, no way I'm playing on that. Way too scared. I will continue with my champions mat, and then... We also got, of course, the early registration of Flots and Jets. And then we got the participation Dragonfire, which looks like way cooler, I think, in real life than it does in the picture. Not only is it holographic, there's like this, like, let's say, like spiral wave pattern in it. I don't know if you can see. But there is this like spiral wave pattern in the holographic. You can kind of see it like there, I think. Um, that looks super cool. And then we were able to exchange points also for the two non-foil cards, the Cinderella and the Rapunzel. Um, and then I also, we were missing only two foils from our collection. Um, so we want to keep like a master set of all the foils. And we were missing Belle and Beast. And I was able to trade some of our legendary cards for that. So I would say a pretty good haul. And now I feel like the pressure is off for future challenges in terms of trying to get tickets to get stuff. Uh, this time we were really hustling uh, for tickets. Um, and we got all of our tickets from playing. We played three sealed scheduled tournaments. Um, we played a pack rush on demand. And then we played in the main challenge. I would say the scheduled tournaments, you get more tickets than you do from the on demand. Uh, so if you can sign up for those, definitely do that. And okay, let's go more in detail. Well, actually, <laughs> so I think leading up to the challenge, we didn't play at any stores or anything. I think I was working or something. And then we did do some testing at home. But I would say we didn't go to any, like, constructed tournaments at our local game stores or anything. Um, and we flew in Friday morning super early. Um, we flew Southwest, which didn't have the whole uh, flight issue that all the other airlines seemed to have. Because... If you remember, there was like that crowd strike bug thing. And so then all the planes were grounded. We went to go fly Southwest and they, it was like it didn't affect them. So we got in no problem. Um, and then the first day we played in a scheduled sealed tournament. Um, it was like a 256 people cap and it was three rounds. So you got four tickets for participation and then you got four tickets per round win. And then if you 3 0 the whole thing, you would get another three tickets. So that gives you potentially 19 tickets, which is a lot. Um, and it's so funny because all my sealed experiences were so different. So on Friday, when we played seal, I went 2-1. So the first round I lost. And then the, the sealed was best of three. The first round I lost and then the second two I won. Um, I think my the all-stars of my deck were Alma. I had Alma. And I could use her to look for the other Madrigals I had were Julieta, Camilo, um, and then I had two, like, support Mirabels, uh, which wasn't super important, I think. Um, and then I also had Brawl, which was great. And I did draw my, I think my cards for the first sealed were pretty bad. The only legendary card I got was um, Cinderella the Singer, and uh, the... I only got two songs, one which was Poor Unfortunate Souls, which is a two-cost song. And then I got um, I Find Him My Flattenum, which is a four-cost song. So uh, that was pretty useless. This is the first game we played. Uh, let's see. Oh, so my opponent showed up late because of his flight. He, like, barely made it. And then in between game one and game two, he, like, left to go... He had also signed up for the four o'clock constructed because he didn't know if he was going to make it for the sealed. And so then he went to go drop it, but like not on his phone. Like he went to go talk to someone to drop. So that took some time. But then we only had literally one minute to play game three because he won the first one. I won the second one. And then game three, we literally had one minute and then we had five turns. And it was kind of like, you know, I never know when to be pushy. So like 
he played a card, I played a card, he quested, and I quested, and I was like, okay, I'm done. And then it was time, and then he called the judge over, you know, because it was like end of time. He's like, okay, I have five turns, and he's like, okay, so it was your turn, so that was zero. And I was like, well, in my head, I'm like, well, technically it was done, but I was like, whatever. I don't want to, like, fight it. I don't really care. So, I mean, he went first, so he won. Also, because it ended on his turn. Uh, so I, I don't even know if I would have won if it if I hadn't been... If he had been turn zero and I had been turn one, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, The second game, let's see. The second game I won 2-0. And let's see. I had very good top decks, I think, for me. I wrote top deck on my side, lots of big characters at the end, and then I could Alma for Camilo. Um, So the first game, my opponent went to 19, and I was at 16, and then I got to go to 20. And then the second game, they were also at 19, and I went to 20. The second game, actually, my opponent got to, they were like at 19, I was at 12, and somehow managed to get to 20. I don't remember how, I just think I had big characters that they couldn't deal with. And then the third game I played was, I won, and it was a 2-1. And I think the first game I just went to, I got to 20, and they were at 9. The second game, they got to 20, and I was at 3. And then the third game, I got to 20, and they were at 6. I do know one of the games I topped... I think it was for, I don't remember which game it was, but there was one game where I top decked in Ursula's Garden. And that card is a four cost location. If you have a character exerted there, your opponent like loses quest for one lore less on each character. And so they had lethal on board, but because I played that, they no longer had lethal. And then they couldn't get rid of my characters. And so I won. Um, yeah. And then let's see if I have anything else to talk about that one. I don't think so. Okay. And then Saturday was a big day, the main challenge. And it went, it went okay. I realized that I have no stamina to play all day. Um, and it shows in my performance. I was doing really well at the beginning of the day. And then it just started to, um, as I got more tired. And I think part of it is like you have your meeting. There's like a player meeting at 9 a.m., right? Everyone goes to that. They talk about the rules, blah, blah, blah. And then you wait for pairings and then you play and it's two game format. And then like that part and it's like 45 minutes. That part is fine. And then but the time it takes for them to go in between rounds is very long, like at least half an hour. And I think some of it is like they need to switch the people who are on the stream and so I think they, like, probably check their deck, make sure the sleeves look okay. If they are not using just regular, like, Disney sleeves or color sleeves, they make you change the sleeves. I think if your shirt has, like, logos and stuff, they, like, make you put on another shirt, that kind of stuff. And I think getting all that set up takes time. But it was a long, long time in between rounds. Um, we did have a one-hour lunch break after round three. And by that time, it was, like, 12, maybe one, actually. Yeah, because I think we all came back at like 2.30 from lunch. And then we had six more rounds. And so, yeah, that was tough. I By the end, I really felt like I was dying. I also didn't sleep well the night before. So I went to bed early at 10 p.m. And then I woke up at midnight. And I was like, oh, this is not good. Uh, I went back to sleep. Woke up at 12.30. Went back to sleep. Woke up at 12.50. And then after that, I just gave up. So I was up all night, uh, which probably didn't help. Uh, but okay let's talk about who i played so uh first round i played green steel uh i got lucky they won the dice roll did they win the dice roll maybe i won the dice roll anyways i went first no i think i won the dice roll um and they did not see a bucky until turn five and they had to ink it to play something else so i won the first game the second game they went first they saw their bucky diablo blah 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 and they i mean i think i did pretty well i got to 17 lore and they got to, by the time they got to 20 so not as like a hor not a horrible runaway game. Round two, I played a local. So I played Rich, who plays at one of our local stores, and he plays Jafar Wheel. And we were in the break in between. We were all chatting, and I was like, oh, he was like talking about his deck. And I was like, oh, I played a Jafar Wheel for VPC. And then I, and, and he got to do his wheel with seven cards left. And then I, he knocked me out of top eight when we were at Games of Martinez. And then he was like, oh, that's the deck I'm playing. Uh, and I was like, okay. And then we matched together. Um, and I was like, what are, what's the likelihood that I would match with someone local out of like 1,800 players? And I was like, before he sat down, I was like, I hope you have horrible luck. I hope you don't draw your Jafars or your wheels. And uh, apparently my cursing worked. I cursed him. So 
the first game I went first and uh, he only got to four lore before I won. Um, and then the second game, it was bad. He couldn't ink past three, three ink. I think his hand, he said, had three grab your swords and then two uh, second start to the rights, which are both uninkable cards. One five cost and one ten cost. So it was it was bad. He would be like, pass. And I'm like, really? Don't ink. I was like, I feel so bad. Um, and he ended up like, had he won one of the games against me, he would have made it into the top 64. So I feel kind of bad. Um, but it was so early on, like, no one knew what was going to happen with the day. So I 2 0 him. Um, and then in round three, I played a purple green deck. What did I even write? Uh, okay. So purple green, I lost both games. They Ursa led my B prep twice in one of the games. And then I didn't get a lot of like my draw stuff. And then so I couldn't, I wasn't really inking for a while, which didn't help. Yeah. So that was unfortunate. Uh, and then we had our lunch break, during which I took a nap. I ate the food there. It was not good. Uh, everything was really salty. And then I took a nap. Um, and then fourth round, I played a mirror match. Finally, because all lunch, I was like, I just want to play a mirror match. And then fourth round, I finally played a mirror match. And I 2 0 them because on both games, I was able to play Double Queen's Castle, uh, which is pretty killer. And then round five, I played Emerald Steel and went 1-1. Let's see. First game... I won. Uh, I didn't take any notes. So I don't know what happened. Second game, I top decked to be prepared, which was very helpful. And then after that, I didn't get any of my removal cards. All I got was like draw cards and I didn't draw into any removal. And then after that round six, I played another green steel player who was at SCG in Las Vegas. And I have to say, this guy was a little dramatic. So the first game, I was on the draw and he got to... Uh, nine lore before I got any lore. And then he was at 16. I was at nine. And then I was able to do a lot of control stuff. So then he was at 18 lore and I was at 14. And then I just kept getting rid of his stuff. And then I got to 20. So I won the first game. And then he told me that I ruined his tournament because I think I maybe like ruined his chances into making top 46. But he was like, you ruined my tournament. Hopefully I can ruin yours. And I was like, oh, okay. Why are you playing Lorcana? Go play Magic or something. This is very toxic. Mm, not a fan. Uh, second game, I was on the play. And he got double buckies. And he also Ursula'd two of my B preps. Uh, which, mm. and then that's when like things started, I think, to go pretty downhill for me. The next one I played was a blue steel deck. And I got beat. Uh, both times I got to 19 lore. And that stupid lucky dime. Both times. And then after, and then also that, so my round seven opponent, the blue steel player had, when he sat down, he was like, do you want to ID? I'm really tired. And I was like, oh no, I kind of want to play. And like, I don't know. I think I was also very tired and I was not thinking about the math because after round six, I was at 23 points, right? So if I had uh, ID'd my next three games, I would have made it to 30 points, which is like the next threshold for more tickets, right? But I played, and so then I lost, and so then I had to win at least one game to get to 30 points. So just screwed myself over. It could have been very easy. Uh, I didn't take it. Uh, and so the next one, I played a Ruby Sapphire deck, and by that time, I was so checked out. Like, I was playing this person, and I was chatting with people next to me. I was not paying attention at all. Um, the first game, I was doing pretty good, questing, getting lore. Uh, I think I got to 12 lore before they got any. And then all of a sudden they're at 15. And so I ultimately got to 17 before they won. The second uh, the second game, I got to 15. We we're both at 15 and then they lucky dimes and stuff. They also had, they were playing that five cost uninkable Hercules. So I double castled them and then they just played two Hercules and like killed both my castles. Which was uh, kind of shocking to me. And then the last round, I played a mirror, and it was one of those... By that time, like, both of us had 23 points, so we both had to 2-0 to get to the next next threshold. So we were we made the agreement, like, oh, okay, whoever whoever wins the first game will just take the win, and that way at least one of us can get to the next threshold. Um, I lost. So that person was playing red-purple, but they were playing, um, like, an interesting version of red-purple. 
So they had RLS Legacy. They had Prince Eric. They had Tuck Tuck. And they didn't actually have, like, Be Prepared, Lady Tremaine, Medusa, or I think maybe even Maui's. And their whole thing was, like, that you would try to play around those things because that's what you expect in a red-purple deck, but they didn't actually have them. Uh, yeah, so I ended up, it's day three with 23 points. So, and, like, my 23 points I got prior to round six. I didn't get any points after round six. And so I think for me, uh, the main thing is I need to work on my stamina of playing all day. And like, I feel like I should have brought my knitting <laughs> to do in between rounds. I also was not dressed for the place because I was like, oh, it's Texas and be super hot. And so I brought like mostly like shorts and dresses and like a jacket, one jacket. And then when I was playing on Friday with my denim jacket on the buttons kept catching on like the cards and then I kept like losing cards on like onto the floor and so it's like I'm not gonna wear the jacket because I don't want to look like I'm cheating but yeah so I think things to work on is stamina like throughout the whole day I really need to work on sleeping before I'm not sure how I'm gonna work on that and then also like maybe I mean I think it's the location the food was not good uh I think Vegas will be better I think we ate that day they had like when did we get mac and cheese with chili, like brisket chili, and then like a brisket sandwich, and they were both pretty bad. Uh, so maybe I'll bring better snacks. And then, oh, some other things I learned from, not so much on Saturday, but from people when I talked to them on Sunday. So there was a guy who was playing, and he went, he was playing Steel, something Steel, and then he went to go draw a card, and he said, draw for turn, draw for beast, right, for tragic beast to get an extra card. Um, and then his opponent called the judge because technically you're supposed to draw for beasts and then draw for turn. So then the judge came and was like, okay, well then um, technically you did it out of order. So you should only get one card. You don't get a draw for beasts because you already drew for your turn. So then you have to put like the second card back. Uh, but then like the opponent said like he didn't think that the person who did the draws was like put the right card back, like the order. And so then they made him shuffle his deck and then draw one card and that kind of cost him a let it go uh maybe maybe uh and then his opponent i think ended up being in the top 64 um and i i hadn't even thought of that because i it's the same thing i guess for castle um and luckily none of my opponents did that because i i think i i switch up the order i say things all the time sometimes they'll be like draw for turn draw for castle draw for this castle but now i know like i have to say like draw for this character in castle draw for this character in castle and then draw for turn because i don't want that to mess up because i feel like one that like it's annoying for them to call a judge and then like you're getting the two cards anyway like it doesn't really change anything and it's, i feel like it's just such a stickler thing because like whether you say draw for turn draw for beast or you say draw for beast draw for turn like you get the same two cards it's not changing anything but you know, rules are rules, I suppose. And so I need to be more careful when I say stuff. When it's the Queen's Castle. Yeah. Okay. Sunday, we played a on-demand pack rush, which is like a format I hadn't heard of. But pack rush, essentially, each person gets two packs of cards. And you use the two, like, uh, the Ursula art cards as your first two ink. Um, and your hand is five cards. And then you play two fifteen. So I played Brian. Uh, he won. I want to say it's because my card was mostly items, but I mean, he also went first, you know, it's best of one. So whatever. Um, but you get one ticket each and then you get one ticket as like whoever wins gets the other ticket. So if you play someone, you know, you get three tickets. Um, so it's a pretty good way to farm tickets, I would say. Uh, and it, but it costs like 30 bucks. So I don't know if it's really that worth it. Um, and then on Sunday, we played in two scheduled sealed events. And so uh, the first one we played in, I feel like my deck was pretty bad. The only good card I had really was that Mulan Elite Archer. Um, the first person I played, they got their Mulan to pop off. I did not, unfortunately. The second person I played had the Ariel Singer 7. And so she sang Mob Song. And then I think later she sang Mob Song and then sang Under the Sea. And I can't, couldn't recover. 
Um, and then the third game, I think I just had, I like took my time, I think more so, and I could do some pretty good combos. Um, I mean, our second game, I was on the draw and they got to 16 before I got any lore. And then I was able to not let them get any more lore and go to 20. The And then we played in another sealed after that. And after that, my sealed deck was, I have to say, the best draws ever. Uh, so amazing. So I had Isabella. I had Chenpo. I had Diablo. I had two baby Pegasus, one big Pegasus. And then in terms of other evasives, I had a TikTok. I had a TikTok and I had the Magic Broom. That gets evasive on their turn. And so the first, uh, first game, second, first round I won. Second round, the first game I won, they didn't quest at all. The second game uh, was pretty even until 15, and then I won. And then the third game, that person was not very fun to play. I think they were really tired. But every time I played a card, they would just like, like I would play an easy book. I would play like a Diablo book. Oh, what? Um, so the first game I won, the second game, they won. Although in the second game, they played two Isabellas and the Chen Po bodyguard, and I was able to get rid of the Chen Po and the two Isabellas. So um, I think the previous turn they had killed one of my uh, one of my characters with their Isabella, and so it had two damage on it. And then I had out, I think, like maybe a a Pegasus, a Sisu, the one one, a Diablo, and I had played a. I think they killed the Diablos. It had two damage, and I still had the Pegasus and the Sisu on board. And then I had also played a TikTok, which is a 4-7 evasive. And then I had a Luisa 4-3 on board. And so I killed the Chempo with the Luisa 4-3 plus a Hercules 3-3 rush. And then I killed one Isabella with the TikTok, and then I used the two other characters to kill the other Isabella. And they were still mad. Um, unfortunately, they still won. Uh, we both got to 18 lore, and then they had two characters that didn't have any direct damage. And so they won that one. And then they were like... And they're like, um, I'm really tired. Do you want to just like split the tickets and then we'll just roll for the extra one because it was going to be seven tickets because we were both undefeated to that point. And so I was like, yeah, sure. And then in, I thought about it after and I was like, no, I should have just played because I would have beaten them because my deck was amazing. Dumb idea. But um, it's okay because I ended up having enough tickets. I won the die rolls. I got the four tickets. I got the three. Um, so I ended up having enough tickets to buy the two promo cards. And we'd already gotten the mat. Oh, so Brian and I pulled our ticket. Um, what helped us get the mat was that I traded someone the Enchanted Ariel for some ticket. Um, I think they got a really good deal because I didn't know how much tickets are worth. And I had heard like maybe 10 bucks per ticket. And then the person was like, oh, yeah, like in Chicago, it was like seven and a half to ten dollars. And I was like, whatever, ten dollars sounds fine per ticket. And so then I sold him. I traded him the Ariel for 21 tickets. And then later in the day, I saw that the... Booths were buying tickets for $4, and I was like, oh, he probably got a really good deal. But, I mean, it was like the chase card for his family, and then we got the Cinderella mat, so I'm not mad. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm still pretty happy that I was able to give help them get their chase card, and also I got what I wanted. So I feel like it's a win-win. Yeah, so that's kind of the summary of Fort Worth DLC. It was super fun. Oh, thank you to all the people who came up and said hi to me. I felt like a celebrity. That was awesome. And... Yeah, very exciting. Next one, the whole team will be there. Uh, currently, it is three people. I don't know if we're going to expand to more people, but we're going to have t-shirts. So hopefully we'll be more recognizable. And what else? So this weekend is last chance at Ursula set championships. So we're going to one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Um, I don't know what I'm going to... Well, I'm definitely going to play Ruby Amethyst, but I don't know if I'm going to try out Edmund's deck, so the winner of Fort Worth, um, or if I'm going to just tweak my current deck a little bit. Oh, I probably should have talked about this when I talked about Saturday. I played Ruby Amethyst. Um, it's like the standard Luca deck, except that I took out a Maleficent and a Tremaine. I put in a Peter Pan's Shadow and a Hook. They were both actually very helpful. The Hook was great when I played Green Steel because you can give evasive, and then I they were too scared to quest with their Flynn Rider. And then the minute they quested, bam, I killed it. And so it was actually very helpful, I think. And then the Peter Pan Shadow, I think, was helpful when I played... I forgot which other deck, but it was actually helpful, I think. And then, I don't know, I might try out Edmund's deck. So he plays 
um, the standard ruby amethyst, but he plays four Trinobog followers and four brooms, so eight one drops. And then he took out Maleficence, and he also took out B King Undisputed and uh, Tremaine and put in two big Sisus. And I actually have played him before. So I played him at the very beginning of set four. We went to Game Castle um, to play in their constructed tournament. And I was playing Ruby Sapphire at the time because that was when like all the hype was like, oh, Ruby Sapphire so good, blah, blah, blah. And he beat me and I was like, maybe I should play Ruby Amethyst. And so really, I feel like he is the person who kind of convinced me to go back to Ruby Amethyst. And at that time, he was playing the same. I think he was playing like um, the standard Ruby Amethyst with four brooms, four Chernobog followers, and then I think he still had, I think he had all Medusas maybe in his deck at that time. So it was like super consistent. Everything was four of. And I just remember when I played him, he had so many cards and so much ink. And I was like, I am the ramp deck and you have more ink than me. Uh, because he, his deck, just, uh, I remember I used it later uh, after I played him and I named the deck all the cards. And it actually did pretty, pretty good. But basically, he just keeps drawing cards and keeps inking. And so he can do these crazy combos toward the end. And I remember, I think when that game, one of our games ended, he had maybe like 12, 13 ink and probably like, I don't know, looked like 20 cards in hand. Probably wasn't that like, like 15, but it was so many cards. So yeah, I was like, oh, I know that guy. I played him before. He beat me, uh, but he made me want to play Ruby Amethyst again. So. Yeah, I may try out his deck. Uh, probably will test it during the week and then and then try it out for this week. I don't know. Flip or no. I'm undecided. Um, but I mean, try it out for like at least one of the games this week. I'm just excited that soon Bucky will be over. And that'll be nice. And I'm also excited for all these new cards. Uh, they have released so many. And so I think one of the videos this week will definitely be all the new cards. I need to look at them. And the only way I look at them really and study them is when I make a video. Uh, I noticed there was a lot of Brother Bear cards, a movie that I totally forgot existed and that I have never seen. That's just me. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. And then, so this weekend, last chance for set championships. And then today, the tickets go on sale for Las Vegas. And then once set five is out, we're going to just do a bunch of testing, try to figure out new stuff. Yeah, probably do some unboxing videos, the huge. So yeah, that's it. Um, overall, I would say uh, DLC was super fun. Thanks to everyone who came and said hi, got a sticker. Definitely excited to go to another one. Gonna work on my stamina and really just like, I really do feel like I checked out so hard at the end. Yeah, and I think now that now that we have all the stuff we want with tickets, it's way I can just focus instead of trying to like maximize tickets, maybe I should just focus on like, placing better yeah so that's it for me yeah okay if you guys went to challenge let me know how your challenge experience was um and if you have any other questions that i could help answer uh let me know all right bye keep shuffling don't end up with a whole handful of non-inkables like me although that did not happen to me at the challenge it only happened to my one opponent who is a local and I feel so bad. But yeah, keep shuffling. All right. Bye.